Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Recording in the meeting to order. Welcome to the July 6, 2022 meeting of the Historic District Commission. Uh, the board's actions in these matters have been deemed <clears throat> be quasi judicial in nature. If any person believes any member of the board has a conflict of interest, that issue should be raised at this point or be deemed waived. So I'd like to introduce at my far right, Dr. Dan Brown. Good evening. Yes, Martin Ryan. Good evening. Uh, I am John Wyckoff. This is Nick Cracknell. Good evening. All right. And this is uh, Rich Blaylock, City Council Rep. Good evening. Margot Doring. Hello. Mr. David Adams. Good evening. In person, I might add. Love it here. I know it. And Karen Bufar. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so the first order of business is our approval of minutes. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the minutes as uh, presented. Second. All righty. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Quickly whip through that. Administrative approvals with Nick Cracknell reading. I want to announce any of these first, then. All of them? Yeah. In case somebody's waiting for um, Okay. Um, we have a number of postponements, so. We have okay. a correction. And, and I'm, uh, I'm out on, on what? number five. Uh, yeah. Before, we'll come back to the admin approvals. I just, All right. Excuse us while we do a little office work here. So we have a number of postponements, and in case somebody is waiting to listen to this, um, I'm going to read them now. Uh, so uh, under public hearings. Petition of 531 Islington Street, Portsmouth, LLC, for the Dunkin' Donuts. You think that's enough that I read yes, that? Yes. Yeah. All right. So we're postponing that till next week. Um, that's a work session public hearing, by the way. Petition of Sheaf Street Condominium Association, owner Smith Family Declaration of Trust, Todd C. Smith, trustee. Um, we're postponing that until October. Request to postpone from petition of Sandra L. Smith Weiss, owner for property located at 138 Gate Street. Um, that gets postponed till August. Request to postpone petition of 33 Richmond real estate owner for property located at 33 Richmond Street. That is August and a work session public hearing. Uh, request to postpone Petition of Seacoast Management Consulting LLC owner. That's postponed till August. And I think there is some. There are two, two more, excuse me. 43 homes. Yes, 30, 43 homes and one Congress, which is not written on there. One Congress is number four. Yes, petition of one Market Street LLC owner for property located at one Congress Street. That is um, postponed till August 3rd. And a request to postpone petition of 43 Holmes Court, LLC owner for property located at Holmes Court. And that's postponed till August. So with that in mind, we'll go through our administrative rules. Pull out number five. Well, okay. Is that correct? Does anyone have to a vote on those? To yeah, vote on the postponements, I think. Oh, all right. Let's have a motion to post. Uh, so codify these postponements. So offered. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, John. <clears throat> okay, there, there are nine administrative approvals. Uh, we'll do those, obviously, before we get to the extension request and the request for rehearings. So I have two of them marked uh, to be determined, to be determined by you folks, 238 Deer Street. I know there's somebody here that can present the uh, miscellaneous changes to that project at 238 Deer. And then the other one I, I thought might generate at least a little discussion is 266 Middle. Um, Karen, you are recusing from 114 Maplewood Ave, correct? Any any other recusals? So we'll we'll pull those three out, right, John? Four, five, and Certainly. eight. Um, if I got my numbering right, we'll start at 10 Prospect if that works. This is a uh, railing that is proposed at 10 Prospect, Prospect Street. I'll share my screen here, sorry. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's the railing that's proposed for 10 Prospect. 
I'm not sure who the fabricator is, but that, that's the uh, the request. M Mr. Cracknell, uh, yes. the, the, correct me if I'm wrong, the building that they're suggesting that that railing goes onto doesn't exist. Is that correct? <laughs> uh, there being no 10 Prospect Street at this moment. You're saying that's a facsimile? Tell the I don't know where the building is. <laughs> Did anyone else go there and look at the building no, on 10 no. Prospect? No, I didn't either. Is this the address for the, the one on the corner? I, I pardon? I took this to be the one on the corner. Which we had been had been produced to us as as zero Maplewood, Maplewood at one point. When we yes. I think, yeah, okay. You're right. This is, is the is empty the place? lot. Yes. So, this is the empty lot. So they, they must have found out that they couldn't get their side entry stairs without meeting a code correct. to meet re code and correct. so they just sent this the, exactly that is the they're, railing that is correct where they're testing an old man here boy <laughs> and the old man came it through. worked okay all right great <laughs> so they want to put that railing and i believe that's on the side street um is it prospect that goes up and turns prospect yeah, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, that was an administrative approval re requirement in the original approval that the railing system should they need it because of the number of stairs <coughs> would come back for admin approval. Thank you very much, Mr. Yeah, Cracknell. Thank that's you. why you get Sorry. the big buck here. Uh, yeah. That's why you get the big buck. Yeah, or not. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Are we good on that? Yeah. Does that yeah. railing work? Okay. Looks fine. 82 Congress. This is a request to replace, I believe, three existing condensers that are in the back alley if you go in off Porter Street and behind the buildings on Chestnut and Congress, and I guess Fleet with the McIntosh building, are in and around on the left are these uh, condensers. They want to replace three and add a fourth, as well as a louvered vent, uh, as shown on the, the plan here. Nick, the it's only on thing the that wasn't clear to me is where is the fourth condenser going? They've located the vent, but I didn't see where the condenser's going. Uh, I, I would have guessed it was going where the three are now. If, yeah, thank you. If you don't mind. Um, the, the plan actually changed, so what's, what's shown in the package here is the three of the existing condensers are being replaced, but they're being moved to the roof. So they want, those three that are hatched there will be gone. Okay. And then uh, on the bottom of the page, we're proposing adding a louver. That's a tall So there pad. isn't a fourth one? The fourth one will be going to the roof. Okay, so all four are on the roof, three are moving from the ground to the roof? Correct. Or this, or this <clears throat> lower plane? Have you got anything that shows where those are going to be right probably right in the middle of the roof so you won't see it from okay let me go street. back just oh. to keep the record straight i think they should also uh state their name and the reason that they're here exactly speaking. yeah sorry who are you guys <laughs> who are you <laughs> mark janini and richard desjardin from uh, mechanic architecture all right i'm just going to be i want to be really I'll clear on like where you're going to put them i'm using your sure. your roof plan here don't touch the screen, but if you could at least point out uh, where they're going to be. Uh, so this is an air handler unit yeah. right here. Yep. To the left of that is going to be all four of them. There's an existing shaft right in the center okay, uh, where Richard was pointing. So that all the condensate lines will come up that, um, that shaft, and then they'll disperse the four condensers in that area. So they'll be right in the center of the building and not visible from the street. That's fine. And I'm okay with that if Nick has the chance to just take a look at an X on the, on the, the what? plan. If you could just give Nick a plan with an X mark <laughs> for the record. Yeah. Marks can you do that? We can do that. Okay. Okay. So why don't we stipulate for 82 Congress that you um, submit a revised route plan showing the locations? Yeah. Okay. What happened to uh, Haven School? I don't know. Uh, South School Street, number two? Yeah. It wasn't in the order here. Um, that was number two, I know. Yeah, I'm using the uh, no, you presumably the online uh, list, and I'm not seeing 50 South School Street. Do you have it on your own um, yeah. iPad? No, do you have it on your it? iPad? Oh. Yeah. Because yeah. Isaac oh, gave me a jump drive, and I'm not it seeing it on here. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Well, I'll do it from my own notes. Uh, 50 South School Street is an AC condenser at the rear of the building. 
Um, Seem pretty straightforward to me. This is not particularly visible, certainly not from a public way. The location is shown in the photographs that were um, edited by the applicant, and that location is up on a second floor on the roof of a uh, yeah. the second floor of the and back of the building. It's on the back of the building. Correct. Yeah. And it's a big old school building. Right. And the conduit is going directly through the wall. There's nothing going up the outside. That's all right. Just to keep it classy, while I was there doing my site walk today, uh, they were actually installing it. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Well, hopefully it's okay. Uh, anybody have it? Keep this up, we're going to have to give you a bag. Yes. <laughs> what were you doing over there? Yeah. Your knee. <laughs> <laughs> Exercising my knee. Yeah. yeah. Good on. Okay. See if I could do paving. Anything else on School Street 50? What we School Street. Deer Street yeah. So, no, we're going to leave Deer Street out and have a presentation for that. All right. We'll leave 114 out for a minute and we'll okay. go to 454 Marcy, which is a ground mounted HVAC. It's out of public view. There is conduit that goes up the back of the building, so we need a, a stipulation. Well, it says it'll be painted to match the house color because of conversations with us, but that will not be visible. Uh, in that location, the tax map that's in here is a little bit <clears throat> faded, but I did go look at a, a better quality map, and that is definitely back a house in the middle of the triangular set of streets that, that frame that block. Mr. Wyckoff, do you have an attachment to this building? Uh, yes, I do. And, and do you approve this location? I couldn't get in the backyard. I would because it, it, it really is... Um not viewable except for maybe the playground by the Haven School condominiums, you know, because you're looking down in between buildings. I think it's fine. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So 10 Commercial Alley. This is another mini split. They're everywhere. Um, the existing conditions are on the screen uh, up there of where it's going to be located. They're proposing to put it underneath this bay window next to the parking off Penn Hollow Street. Uh, there it is there. Which? I, I, I'm, I'm questioning why they're putting it up underneath the bay window instead of down. It seems to... The, the, the down has already got those three meter sockets under oh, it. To there. the left, like in between. Down. <clears throat> it, it may be possible to put it there. They they are going to paint the entire unit the color of the brick, uh, so you won't have that box of white around the fan. They just that's just the way they colored it. But um, that's good. Let's make that I a mean, real stipulation. I mean, if if everyone felt there was a better location and they have the ability to do it with the electrical meters there, and the gas meters, then I'm sure, and the landlord. I mean, it's just the, the bay window is such a beautiful feature. Yeah. And that thing sitting underneath it, it's too bad. It's a feature. They could at least center it. Yeah. I, I, I would, well, I, don't, I can't see what's to the left of it, but I think there, there are some, some other vents. There's two they holes that are just yeah. the left of the center of that bay window underneath, it looks like. Yeah, there are vents. Something there, on the, the it, two yeah, holes something in there. Vents. Yeah. Mr. Cracknell, could we empower you to try to negotiate that into a more uh, center? Oh, perfect. Yes. Yeah, I saw you there at the beginning. Good evening. Sorry, I'm the what owner. options do you have to I'm the tenant of the, uh, of the Elephantine Bakery that is proposing. My name is Sharif Farig. Um, to the left of that, between the meters and where we're proposing are two vents that vent out um, steam and heat from our kitchen. So that's why I can't go further to the left. We could drop it lower. If In you here? Can you see my grabber? Could you put it down there? We can certainly explore putting it down there. When we had the um, HVAC contractor come by, he recommended from the perspective of the plumbing and mechanical inspection, that was the best location to put it. But I'm certainly happy to um, to revisit that with him. And if we need to lower it, we can certainly I'm lower it. I'm actually wondering about that. Um, if, of course, he must know the code, but it, these uh, units, when they sit out on their wall-mounted brackets, they sit a good 10, 12 inches away from the wall. And I'm wondering, with all that's going on at there anyways, what does this vent mean? You know, what is this vent? A dryer vent, or what is this thing? It's, it's basically an exhaust from the, uh, from the oven and from the, the kitchen. Oven, so it's probably hot. Yeah. yeah, so it's blowing out. 
Um, I think part that's of the an exhaust from a commercial oven. You mean? Yeah, it's an electric no, oven. No, yeah, no, I couldn't be. Uh, I think also part bay, of the yeah, under the bay. Yeah. Well, Sharif, is it at all possible that it go in this area over here, which is I think where Margot was originally suggesting, or even this side, either side, I think would have a similar effect. I mean, it, it's clutter along the bottom, no matter where it goes. Yeah. But there appears to be a, a space here or here. No, there's more room on the left. On the, yeah, a little more room on the left. But that, the box will fit in either spot, unless you folks have a preference. I, I would agree with Margo myself. I think it would be it'd be better centered. And if you have the vent there and you can't center it, it might be better down here. And I think to John's point, if it's on standing brackets rather than the wall, it might be able to be a little closer to the wall. But Sounds like let's make a deal. Wouldn't my only concern about um, if it has to go through that part of the wall, we wouldn't want an extra, you know what I mean? Like, is what? it I think an extra can, pipe coming out? You'd still of it? be able to go straight through and then run any conduit up the wall from the inside, right? Because you're going to have to run something from the inside. To it's a great question. I wish I had an answer. I know the initial thinking of the HVAC contractor was if we mounted it at that level, then yeah. everything could go in right directly behind it. And actually, the, the first mini split would effectively be on the inside what's of, on your inside wall behind that um, the brick is just a facade so it's just one layer of brick and then it's concrete and then on the other side it's sheetrock with um, patinaed mirror so we would just go through that so that's so you'd be going through that anyway just at that height correct so the, if you went lower to the left you would still go through the same material and then just have to run a chase up to the unit in indoors that's right. I think I think the contractor has chosen the simplest, easiest for him, and that's understandable. But it doesn't mean that other locations are not possible. Just a little more inconvenient for sure. Him. I'm happy to go back with whatever the recommendation Thank you. is to ask. I so is it? We could approve it in the better, the better location, and you are welcome to. You could even come back next week if there was some serious deficiency with putting <laughs> it in the lower left. Right. And, yes. Can I bring up? Um, the fact that it, this is so visible screening. that we need screening yeah. well he's he's what? because it's difficult to screen with the parking and uh, it, well because there isn't a lot of space there well the cars I mean there's uh, the three posts that the gas company put in so right. that's a definite end so if somehow a screen type fence could be put across right where those three posts are they're not gonna lose anything yeah so a screen to screen the gas meters as well as the, and the electric condenser. meters well, that electric meters are pretty. Let's win. Let's well, win, win. It's yeah. pretty big, but yeah. I think one concern is that the depth with the mounting of the unit would actually extend past the depth of the electrical meters and past the depth of the gas uh, protectors, pole protectors. So the screen would actually have to be mounted further out. Exactly. So. As, yeah. as strange as it may sound, and as much as I love screening, this is actually one place where I might actually excuse it. Between painting it the color of brick and the fact that you already have these it's meters yes. already there, it, it's not, I don't think this is adding one more thing in between them down low is going to add to the noise. Right, However, if I were you, I would be worried about it being plowed into, and I'd want something to protect it from snow. So just to make that point, because I'm the one that recommended it be painted to match the brick, because we haven't really done that much. If you look at the image up there, and it's not easy to see, but <clears throat> they've already done this with this sort of dryer vent here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's been painted the color of the brick, and you can see how it disappears. Unfortunately, the burgundy he chose here isn't even close to the brick, <laughs> so it looks like it still stands out. But it'll have a similar effect to this, and the whole thing, as I understand it, and I would hope is the case, this entire unit yeah. would be painted that color. So I, I think it's it'll grow. it'll be less less of an eyesore without a screen if it's it's, it's worth a try, right? Yeah. We've gotta, try. We got to we got to do better try. than we are, uh, and I think it's worth in this location trying that. But I I agree with what I think most people are saying here. Okay, put it in another location. Yeah, if it can work. All right. So does that work for you if we lower it to this location over here? And you can come back in a week and tell us why it doesn't work. If if it doesn't work, otherwise you can proceed over here. I am certainly fine to do that. I think the only counter I would say, if you zoom back out um, of the picture uh, and show the full thing, there's actually uh, several elements on there 
that initially, like the three vents to the left, which were not even These? visible. Yep. Yeah, yeah uh, we're talking about down here. Right, right. I was just saying, because I'm not good at the digital <laughs> mock-up of this, it, I do think it would blend in quite well. I, and I left the fan white, which would be painted red, but that was just for the purposes um, to, <laughs> to see the contrast. And then if you look to the right-hand side, the, uh, the additional electrical meter, there is actually uh, a conduit on the right-hand side. On the, over here. Yeah, at yeah. the top there's a conduit above the second gray box that runs up the building that's yeah. painted the same. Okay. Yeah, that's so, well hidden. Yep. So I think Nick's idea um, makes a lot of sense. So I think Marvelous. we might have to pull this one out. Well, uh, yeah, well we'll just put a stipulation there, I think. We got one for the, uh, the roof okay, plan on the other one. stipulation that he yeah. come in next week? Uh, no, that he can proceed if it goes in that location and if he can't put it in the preferred location, then he comes back with a revised okay. plan. Just okay. save him. Okay. And just to make sure that I understand, the preferred location, is it still mounted on the wall or is it mounted on the ground? Yeah, well, I think it's, it could be either. It just either. needs to be against the wall. Um, okay, so between the, the leftmost pole and the right electrical the meters. There. Got it. He, he is going to have to consider snow in the winter. Well, they'll put it on a stand. Okay. So yeah, it'll yeah. be at least 18 inches off on a stand or on the wall. I don't think it matters the how, okay. they, how they mount it. What okay. snow? But keep it low. <laughs> You know, not yeah. not not up here, but yeah, as low okay. as you can get it. Okay, thank um, you. All righty, thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> okay, just writing that down. Yeah. All right. So the last one on the short list is 12 South, South Street, Street, which I think is the taller chimney, right? Oh the um, they're increasing the height of the chimney from three feet to uh, above the ridge to seven. And this is required by the mason in order to get adequate draft for the chimney. So, boy, it's probably the first time in 11 years I've seen somebody extend a chimney yeah. and either shorten it or remove it. <laughs> like that. So it seemed good to me, but what do you guys think? It's fine. Yep. Really good, Martin. All right. Sounds good. So we've gone through one, two, three, uh, six, seven, and nine. And there's a stipulation that we get a revised roof plan showing the exact location of those uh, four roof-mounted condensers under 82 Congress, and then a stipulation on 10 Commercial Alley Unit 2 that the applicant relocate the proposed uh, condenser to uh, be situated between the electrical meters and the gas meters uh, as low as possible on the wall. Okay, so Nick has given us a nice little synopsis. Can we have a so moved? Motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? All right. So now we have 238 deer. If we could have the applicant uh, or the representative present the miscellaneous changes, that would be good. Good evening. Mark Janini and Richard Desjardins from McHenry Architecture. Um, uh, back in November, uh, of 2001, we were here to get and got approval for the uh, mixed-use project at 238 Deer Street. Uh, as part of that approval, there was two stipulations uh, to come back uh, with redesign, one being for the, the brick type that we had shown as proposed at the time, and also a redesign of the parapet. So in your packet here tonight, we have um, the proposed and the previously approved, which shows the original design intent for uh, the parapet. Um, as you can see, we basically, the intent was to reduce the size of the parapet overall. So we, instead of having it uh, stepped down and kind of castellated in the original design, we've lowered the parapet all the way across and around the, the front and also the Deer Street side, or Deer Street, I'm sorry, and Bridge Street. Um, and then to get the, the, the safety height that we need, the three foot six inches for a railing, we have a short railing that sits on top of the parapet, similar to what we were showing in uh, previous designs, but now this wraps all the way around uh, the two, two and a half sides. And then in addition to that, we brought in brick samples. And that was a stipulation of the original approval, right? That you which show samples that we show samples, yeah. yes. And we or we so show the the new proposed brick in yeah, this case. That's fine. Thank you. Can, which uh, one? Have one? Are they all the same? <laughs> Those are all the same. So it's yeah, a, they are all the same. 
Can yeah, you get one out of there? Just I'm working on it. No, I meant him. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> look at that. So, Here, I've got one. so these are. Uh, this is a set of different multicolored. It's the same. It's the same brick. It's, it's the same brick. It's showing the full range. Yeah, it's just showing the range of the colors. I'm good. I don't want it. Yum. Thank you. Pardon? What I like is it's not ringers, mm -hmm. and there aren't heavy black lines yeah, across. Mm -hmm. So it's the <coughs> it's the fire. So David, are you are you good with that brick? I, I'm I'm just commenting that they've selected a brick that doesn't have heavy uh, burnt lines around the edge, which in the trade are called ringers. It's a very modern look, um, you know, a modern rusticated look. I think this is a very natural look to a brick. I'm I'm very comfortable with this. Okay. You? Yeah. Did you see it? Yeah, I did. It's a brick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Keep going. All right. Uh, in addition to those two items, um, since design is now fairly complete, you know, we've had, there's a couple other MEP items that we've added to the set. Um, regarding railing, or I'm sorry, uh, metal roof access. So if you go to uh, sheet A3, go that <coughs> couple more. Oh, oh A8. Order. Oh, sorry. This is, yeah, this is the previously approved. Go down one more. Right there. There we go. Uh, you can see we have a roof access ladder uh, at the top of the page there. This is, a, this will really only be visible on the side of the building because uh, it's kind of centered, but it provides access to the upper part of the roof and the uh, elevator overrun. Uh, there's also a louver on the bottom left page there. And then and we removed, uh, at one time we had envisioned uh, meters and stuff, a meter bank and stuff in this vicinity, so we had an overhang to protect that. Um, currently, most of those meters are going to be inside, so there was no need for a larger meter bank and overhang so that's been removed and then if you go down two pages to a4 on the back of the building there is another louver in the bottom right there that's been added uh, for mechanical equipment I think all these changes are for the better anything else that's it and there's the brick there's the brick yes that's the uh, <coughs> Brick and then a section. What, what's of the that. name of the brick that you just showed us? That is the Glengarry Red Flash. It's the one that's here. Okay. Yep. You never know. Does this building have a central heating system and air conditioning? Uh, it's going to have heat pumps. Oh, it has heat pump. Yep. So, uh, so they're coming off of a boiler and. Uh, no, those, yeah. so there'll be a set of condensers that we've been showing all along that are kind of along the alleyway. On the lower roof, if you go up, yeah, right there. So there's a set of condensers. So where are they up here? Yeah, right up there. Up behind here. Yep. Okay. There's a set of condensers there that run, you know, to heads in in each of the units. So there's one for each unit then. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Anybody have any other questions for these guys? Any? Okay. Do you want to? I vote on 238? I think we should, yeah. So would somebody make a motion for 238? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those against? All right. So, Karen, you come back. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. All right. 266 middle. Is anybody here for 266 middle? You are. All right. Oh. So can you just explain in a little more clarity than the application? I will do my what, best. What's being done here? Um, again, Mark Janani from McHenry Architecture. I'm helping fill in for uh, Mr. Bozen, the applicant who had planned on presenting tonight. Um, but his his since we were here uh, several months ago to get approval for window replacement and uh, siding restoration, uh, the work has begun. About 90% uh, of the windows have been installed. And they've also peeled back about three quarters of the vinyl siding, or maybe half of the vinyl siding at this point. And in doing so, they discovered, you know, there's uh, significant decay in the building structure, particularly in the back of the building, uh, from rotten sills to studs that are rotten, original sheathing that's rotten. 
So it's become a much more extensive project than the applicant had originally intended. So at this point, um, his thought is the, uh, the windows will continue to be installed and the, uh, they're gonna continue removing all of the metal, uh, brake metal that was around window trim and other trims on the building. So they're going to restore all the wood, wind, or all the wood trim, <coughs> uh, window trim, add back corbels that were missing around some of the window sills and stuff. And then they're looking for uh, to uh, repair and replace in kind the uh, vinyl siding that was on, on the building. So the intent would be uh, to replace all the vinyl siding that's on the building. Uh, so like the kind of sky baby blue that's there now would be replaced with something uh, that would hopefully be a little more complementary in color, but basically repairing and replacing. Well, I, I'm sorry, but why do you use the word repair? Hmm? Well, I guess replacing kind. It's not really repair. Okay. We got some more comments on this particular. He said oh, we don't repair, understand. And frequently yeah. look at the installation of vinyl siding. Mm. Anybody down here? Um, I mean, I would hate to see vinyl on this. I mean, I've noticed the vinyl falling off from the side. Um, I either walk or drive by this house every day, pretty much. Um, it's really front row, and I would hate to see vinyl there. there it doesn't okay. torn because I yeah. I, yeah. Anyone else? How about over here? I would just ask. I understand that this is about economics and the expense. What about just doing the front facade and wooden clapboard and? Uh, we compromise and consider right. the sides vinyl for replacement. I, I, without the applicant being here, I mean, it sounds reasonable to me, but. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> it's a deal. I mean, I think my, my concern is that um, once the underpinnings are fixed and the vinyl is put on top, there isn't going to be any future, near future opportunity to bring this building back to where it should be. And the vinyl siding is gonna last a really long time and it could be another 20 or 30 years before this building has an opportunity to be the showcase that it is without being covered up with vinyl siding. So I'm very sympathetic to the economic issue, um, but this is a front and center house with a lot of really special details that I appreciate um, Mr. Boson is replacing and taking care of, but I think it's a shame to fall short um, at this point. So I... That's very well said. I, I, I would agree with um, Martin's comment um, and David's making a compromise on this. And so what we, what well, Martin and I, for instance, might be asking is 25%. So we want the front to be restored. Now it doesn't have to be new clapboards. You could take that vinyl off and, and repair and paint the front along with all of the trim which you have pledged to restore. Um, that would go a long ways and then the back and the sides do the trim with some kind of matching vinyl. Um, that's a compromise. I, I don't know if everybody likes it, but it's a compromise. Maybe with that feedback we could ask Mr. Boson to come back with a definitive plan. Is it possible to get approval for that at this point? And then if he wants to come back with other changes or? No. Well, it is possible to approve that particular, if we did. Well, you could certainly what put it What does he come next week? Okay. And it, then Talk it's clear either. what what's happening. You gotta and wait it, another that, week. That's not a typical <laughs> outcome. Yeah. Well, we have done this before uh, with some buildings. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Um, so we, I guess we need a motion to continue. Motion to continue. Okay. Seconded. Till next meeting. Yeah. Yes. Next week. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those Aye. against? Thank you. And it'll be at the beginning of the meeting, so. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, we won't keep you up. All right. Like that. That's it, isn't it? Uh, that 114. Is 114. Well, 114. That's yes. Okay. 114. Sorry. Fishing it out here.
This is a change in windows uh, from the previously approved windows. And <clears throat> the, the bracket detail, I guess, is, whoops. <coughs> this is Ann Whitney's project. Look, looks familiar, I'm sure, to most of you. This mm -hmm. is the, uh, the back building there at 114 Maplewood. And she is proposing to change uh, a couple of the windows. Um, I can't read that. Yeah, you, yeah, perfect. She's here. <laughs> um, let's, you don't have the drawings up. Oh, I'll, I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, we're, um, there's one window that the size has changed. It's on the back elevation, and we had a double, if you're looking at your one of two, um, on the left side elevation, you can see a double, double hung, an A unit. We originally, yeah, I actually go to the next page, um, second page. There we go. What, is it moving? It seems to be frozen. Hang on. There, there we go. That's where you want this to one. Be. Okay. You see uh, where I've got the red, the, there are two larger um, six over one double hungs, eight over ones, and we ran into an issue with the property line, you know, we had to ship the double window such that it was just looking at the building next door. So we decided to get rid of the double window and just do a slightly wider single window that would have the better view of the of the mill pond. Um, it's on the back of the building. The other window changes, I'd, the window sizes, the C and D window sizes are the same size, but I inspect them as awnings, and they want to go change those to casement windows. So it's the exact same window, it's just how it opens has changed. And the other stipulation that was on the original HDC approval was a little more information about the entry. Bracket. And we, they wanted to have five-quarter trim behind the bracket, which I've shown, and then I've actually chosen a bracket size. <coughs> um, there'll be a painted bracket. <coughs> So those are the three items. I have no Thanks, questions. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So we have a very decent uh, bracket showing here, spec'd out. I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Any second? second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Very good. Okay, that's it. Okay, that is it for our administrative approvals. Please, please, please. Post Street, 125. I'm getting there. <clears throat> A petition of Bow Street Theater Trust, owner for property located at 125 Bow Street, <clears throat> wherein permission is requested for a second one-year extension of the certificate of approval originally granted on July 10th, 2020 to allow new construction to an existing structure, replace roof and add insulated cladding on walls. As per plans on file in the planning department, said property is shown on assessor map 105 as lot 1F lies within character district four downtown overlay in the historic district. And who is here to present this? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the Commission and Planning Department. Tracy Kozak, Arcove Architects, here on behalf of the applicant, Seacoast Repertory Theater. Uh, as just mentioned, this was approved two years ago. We had a one-year extension, and now we're asking for a second uh, one-year extension, and we have the full application here. Basically, it has been progressing in small incremental stages. The interior work was completed first with handicapped bathrooms and a new lobby. The, uh, that was followed by the mechanical system replacement. There is a mechanical platform, which is uh, newly constructed on the back. That, that uh, was an, um, an amendment to the application, which is included in your packet. That is done, and then third and final phase is the new roofing and uh, siding, which has not yet started. Um, it has been delayed due to um, procurement and material um, market volatility. It is intended to start uh, sometime this year. Um, I don't have an exact date, but nothing has changed. Uh, this is as presented and approved previously. Uh, we are 
for those who may not have been on the commission at that time, we are um, trying to find a solution to a very leaky roof that's been there since 1980. Uh, they spend a lot of money every year fixing the leaks, and the lifespan of that glass roof system has has finished. It's time to be uh, replaced. Um, they are looking to replace it with an insulated, uh, solid, opaque uh, system to improve energy efficiency. Uh, it complies with the current energy code. You cannot reconstruct what was there in the 80s with the current energy code. And they also had to put in a new fire suppression sprinkler system in the lobby, which um, freezes against the glass. So insulation is important. The glass storefront facing Bow Street will remain except for the far right panel, which is where the sprinkler main entrance is, so we need a solid panel there. But everything else, the glass stays on the vertical wall. Um, but on the side alley going down to the back, the building that is, as you see here, proposed, it's a, it's a solid wall. It is a fiber cement panel system with a composite trim that replicates the current existing storefront. The metal roof is a standing seam, but it's a, it's a batten seam, so it's a two-inch tall, two-inch wide batten, uh, which is in a black finish color. Uh, and the field, the flat panels are blue to try to um, mimic the current effect you get with the glass reflecting the sky and the black frame of the skylights uh, and two snow rails across. That's pretty much it, so no changes, and we're hoping for another one-year extension so we can get this rolling. <laughs> Tracy, I just have a question. Was that um, the, was the standing seam, I mean, with the battens, yep. was that what we approved two years ago? Yes. And, and was the colors the same? Are yep. The colors the same? We, we came in with actual samples for the work session, and the same colors, we're not changing it. It's the um, blue field with the black battens. Um, okay, so this is um, a second extension request. Um, what do you think should be the next step? Oh, this year? Take, take public comment. It's a public hearing, so uh, ask any questions, take public comment. And Alrighty, so um, if anybody in the public would like to make any comments uh, concerning this renovation of the lobby of the Seacoast Rep, please stand up. Or raise your hand if you're watching virtually. I don't see any hands up. Okay. Yet. So I'll close the public hearing and uh, we'll have a discussion and a vote. If anybody just wants to. John, I, I, I will have to vote no to be consistent with my previous vote no. Okay. I just feel that this is too much of a change in the envelope and you know, I understand the, okay. the hardship of the applicant but you know this is this is a very unique uh, glass enclosure and it's just not going to be the same and I don't think we consider such a radical change for any other type of architecture here in this community so I'm going to be voting no. All right, that's um, good. Would anybody like to um, make a motion? Mr. Have Chairman. A question? Oh. One question? Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. So we're simply approving the extension or changes to? No, we are approving the extension. Okay, yeah. he's right. So this was previously approved. It was. Yes. Right, so they're yeah. just asking for an extension. Yeah, with okay. no changes to the previous design. <clears throat> Doesn't mean you can't change something, though. No. All right. All right. It's up. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd, I'd like to say that I, I was not here, as you can imagine, uh, for this the first time it came by, nor was I here, it seems, for the one-year extension, and I don't understand that part. Mm -hmm. um, but um, when I go back in my Wayback Machine uh, to the 80s, when this was proposed to be put on this building, the drama of being able to see through it, the opacity of this was was part of the charm and the raison for its connection to this building being an angular in in in, in many ways obtuse addition to this brick building that was there and so honestly i can't see supporting this uh I, at, at all i think that the the loss of the glass uh means that if they that this design is of no longer 
valid. So I, I, I won't support this. I, I'm not going to jump into this at this point, but would anybody else like to make a motion or do Rich, something? Here? Did you have a question? Um, no, I'm just going to state that I'm, I, I will be supporting just because it was previously approved. I know I wasn't part of that, um, but I feel like the applicant has stated they've already been doing it in pieces, um, and it just, I don't feel like it's fair that, that, that it's been approved, and then I know construction has been very challenging the last few years. Um, that's my I, I, I hate to bring any kind of construction experience to this sort of thing. However, as soon as somebody touches this roof, Excuse me, I'm just going to complete my state here. As soon as somebody touches this thing, it has to be brought up to code, which unfortunately is not R2 or R3, which is what these panels are. And the walls, I can't, I don't understand how they were allowed. Basically, I don't know how a building inspector approved this back in the day because even back in the 80s, there was R19 insulation in the walls and R, R19 in the ceilings and at least R11 in the walls. None is met here. And uh, so I would say that any touching of this as far as repairing and putting in new, et cetera, is going to lead to trouble with the building inspector. Also, the fact that they've sprinkled this lobby, which is a very safe and good idea for having a hundred people milling around waiting for the show to start and being told that the sprinkler system is in danger because of these glass panels. And we have approved it. However, Margo. I, I think I was going to say pretty much what you said, that the requirements of the code for this public venue, um, it's a life safety matter. And while I understand Martin's point of, of losing a, a particular point in time, and I've made this argument on other buildings that just because it's not old doesn't mean that it isn't, isn't important. Um, the applicant and has not been able to come up with anything that can be that can be similar in design and accomplish what needs to be done for life safety. And I think we in the past have lost, given, given way in, in the name of life safety before. Um, so I think the applicant has come up with the best solution, trying to maintain the shape and the feel of what was there in the 1980s while bringing it up to code. So I would support an extension. All right. Um, would somebody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Uh, wait a minute. One second. I'm sorry. I'm, that's very good. Thank you. Um, I should ask the public if, if they want to speak on this. You did. I did already. Yeah. So that's all gone by. Yeah. yeah. All righty, motion, please. Uh, so motion to approve as presented. Any second? Second. So uh, unless there's any more discussion, I will just ask for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And against? Aye. Opposed or no? Okay, so that's two opposed. Okay. Did we need findings Aye. of fact or no? Yeah, yeah I would. Nay. Nay. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> do that. All right. We need findings of fact from right. the motion maker. Yeah, we do need some findings of fact here. You have the For an extension. Yeah. It's getting there. I got it. Um, Special. Uh, to promote, educate, pleasure, and welfare of the district to see residents and visitors. And it is I'll say compatible with innovative yeah, compatibility um, compatibility of innovative technologies with surrounding properties. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so uh, we have had our vote and you have your permission. Um, okay. So go. rehearing requests. On a rehearing. All right, so now we've got requests for, for a rehearing from Jonathan and Valerie Sobel for property located at 129 State Street, 129 State Street LLC owner, wherein permission was granted on May 4th, 2022, to allow renovations and new construction to an existing structure, removal of the shutters, addition of dormers, roofing, 
and siding changes as per plans on file in the planning board department. Said property is shown on assessor map 107 as lot 47 lies within character district four in historic districts. So what we have here is two requests for rehearings. And uh, essentially what we're looking at is if you feel that there is a mistake in our decision as far as the nuts and bolts of it go. Um, it's not whether your opinion of, of, of one particular item um, you like or whatever. We're, we're looking at the meeting, our cri criticism of our own meeting, so to speak. And um, with that said, I, if there's any discussion. Is it, everyone is familiar with that. I don't have any regrets or second okay. well, thoughts. Of mine. So the, the question is whether anything has been done unlawfully, which mm -hmm. is either procedurally okay. or substantively, yeah, okay. or more general than that, whether the outcome was unreasonable. Just to add to what John was saying, Certainly. yeah, that's a little a little less clear what unreasonable might mean. It's in the eye of the the viewer. Um, but I think it's the outcome based on the evidence that was submitted, presented, and the testimony given was your conclusion using your own regulations unreasonable based on that evidence. I think those are the two standards you want to look at. And if you answer yes to either one of those or both, then you would be voting to rehear this at a subsequent meeting. There's no presentation tonight from either party, the applicant or the, the moving party here seeking a request for rehearing. So you're reviewing that written correspondence from Mr. Sobel, uh, Valerie and Jonathan and determining from your re either review of the record or your memory of the application whether something unlawful or unreasonable occurred as uh, alleged. It's in the complaint from the Sobels that, um, you know, there were certain deficiencies in their mind in your decision making and your review process that led the commission to an outcome of approving the project. Okay. Thank you, Nick. So that's a nuts and bolts. Um, may I ask him, is there a particular uh, example of where we failed to uh, properly hear this? Well, if you read the letter. Well, can it be stated out loud? Well, I, 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 can, I can try and summarize the allegation uh, as to what was unreasonable, I guess, whether not less so unlawful, but it doesn't matter. Either, either of those is a trigger. Okay. Um, not wanting to speak for Jonathan and Valerie, certainly, I'm just using their correspondence. Um, I think they felt like the information submitted was incomplete. An example they offer of that was the lack of a property survey that clearly documented what was presented to you was correct, which is uh, the question was raised by, I believe, the Sobels in the public hearing process that the extension of the rear addition, the previous addition, was going to crowd and uh, create issues uh, of visibility or encroachment on the Chief Street right away. And the applicant, in my recollection, uh, made it clear to the commission and the audience that the expansion was an additional three feet on the back of the existing building and that there would be approximately three feet left between that building wall and the edge of the right of way. So uh, currently today, there's six feet approximately between the back wall and the edge of the right of way. There'll be three feet. The, the zoning code, as we discussed at the meeting, does not require any setback. Mm -hmm. It's a front. The building has two fronts, a Sheaf Street front, even though it's perceived as the back of a house, back of building, it's a front. There is no setback. Um, I did look uh, at the 96 survey, which was referenced in the meeting as the controlling document and in fact there is a six foot setback and approximately a three foot setback from the approved plan if you if I haven't lost anybody that's an example mm -hmm. uh, that I think was was aired in general the massing of that garage. so the ma I think that's a secondary issue the massing and scale of the of the garage was <clears throat> questioned as to whether it was subordinate enough to the historic structure and there's some suggestion that when this was reviewed, 11 or 12 years ago in the previous approval when the addition was perhaps added, perhaps it was earlier than that. I'm not the expert on the history of the property, 
but that the, the scale of massing was a really important aspect. The commission in this person's mind may have gotten better or more right than you guys did, adding a little more volume to the back. Mm -hmm. uh, again, just trying to. What about okay. this double jeopardy stuff? Here? Well, okay, then and I have on my list the uh, there's a, a suggestion the elevations were either incomplete or inaccurate or just in a, not enough information on the four sides of the building. I, I think the submission speaks for itself in respect to uh, those elevations. They're pretty well detailed. Again, I'm not advocating one way or the other. I'm just telling you what the review of the record seems to represent in respect to the elevations. There's a very detailed elevation of all four sides. I think any of you that were here know that. Um, and then the last, last thing I saw jump out from the letter that's on the screen was that um, the suggestions being made that the 2011, if that's the correct year, the previous decision that put the decorative window uh, hoods or lintels um, and put the addition on the back of the building was somehow a uh, permanent um, fixture that would encumber the current HDC's ability to deviate from that um, decision back in 2011. And I think you can come to your own conclusion on whether things can adjust. And the fact that that was raised uh, at several points in the review process is, is not unimportant. And uh, John, in fact, I think was here when the last one was approved and asked me to go back and pull it out and show him and others the, uh, you know, the, the application and the approval. So that, that's some examples. Uh, again, I'm not going to say it's all inclusive, but I think those are the high points of what Mr. and Mrs. Sobel are uh, suggesting. Good. I'm, I'm glad you brought all that out. I, you know, I feel like we were just going to jump into this cold. And uh, I, I will just say that we don't look at precedent. We just don't. I never have. I'm not sure. We're required to. I don't see it in our. I don't see it as a requirement. We judge it based on what is presented to us. In this, at this time, so um, it's not like we're the Supreme Court and we're looking at uh, you know case law and and what went down before and it it just doesn't work that way. Now, if if an applicant misrepresented drawings, you know, scaled drawings, maybe took liberties with with the, the scale of the drawings, of the presentation of the drawings and things like that, that's a whole different uh, accusation. It could have been an error. It could have been, um, you know, we look at renderings. Renderings do not have a an accurate, uh, you know, there, there's some artistic license involved. So, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with the notion that we're being asked whether we really meant what we meant when we came down with the decision we did. Yeah. Uh, I'm comfortable with the decision we made. Um, and I'll, I'll be voting to uh, not have a rehearing. So just two quick follow-ups to what Martin said. Um, I think in respect to precedent, you may not be obligated to look at it, but I think in fairness to yourselves, you did. Mm -hmm. you, you, we actually got the files, you looked at it. I, I think it, the, the concern expressed during the hearing to my eyes as an observer was taken very seriously. Seriously enough, and there, there was enough questioning amongst ourselves and the larger community as to whether those decorative window <coughs> things uh, were original, old, were on the building, and we, we did some research. So I, I think precedent isn't unimportant. It's a question of whether it overrides uh, the decision at the end of the day. And I think you did your due diligence from as an observer. I'm not on the commission. But I think that's worth pointing out. It wasn't discounted when it was raised. Not to say you suggested that. But uh, I think in fairness to everybody here, you did look at it and look at it for uh, uh, enough time to be fair. And I, I think I forgot to mention what's not unimportant is there are two stipulations on that approval. And one of them is that if there is any uh, problem with the rear yard setback and the survey as presented by the applicant, they are required to address that prior to getting a building permit. And they need to come back here mm -hmm. if it ends up that they misrepresented 
what was told to us orally. So uh, there, there's no way they're getting a building permit to demolish and replace that without that being confirmed with that survey and that it fits within the confines of the code. So you guys put that in as a stipulation to, to cover the, the margins in case there was some misrepresentation, even if it was unintentional. And the second thing on the stipulations is the uncertainty, which wasn't mentioned by the Sobels, but it's important for the public to know how you deal with uncertainty. We, we weren't clear at the end how the roofs would come together between the abutting two two unit townhouse and this building because they have a continuous plane uh, and obviously the fake slate is going to be a different profile than the than the asphalt roof so we all recognize that and stipulated that the applicant needs to come back with whatever solution they come up with if they're building a little parapet or they're going to do the whole roof in the faux slate they need to come back so I'm mentioning that because I think this, this was given a great deal of attention. It's a very important building, and it wasn't an easy decision for some of the members here as to what to do with some of those 2011 improvements. I'll stop talking. Okay, thank you, Nick. So, Margo has a question. Margo, yes. Uh, not oh, a comment. question. I was going to make a comment. Sorry. So it seems to me that there were two major issues, two and a half, raised by the, by the Sobels here. One is setback and the other is mass, and the two kind of go hand in hand in terms of where the building sits and the mass that it appears on the streetscape. And I was a reluctant approver of this application because I also had concerns about the mass and the setback. But this is a question of procedure, and we did look very carefully at setback and we did look very carefully at mass. There was a lot of discussion back and forth. So I think the concerns were addressed by the committee. They were discussed by the committee, and that is what is required of us. Um, so uh, I, I sympathize that, that you don't always get what you want, and I don't always uh, get what I want when, um, when I vote yay or nay. Um, but I do think everything was properly considered. Regarding double jeopardy, um, the way I looked at this issue of whether the windows should, should or should not be um, decorated is that this building had been through a lot of different changes in the past. Mm -hmm. And when you buy a historic building and you look back at the history and you would like to take it back to a different point in time, we're not requiring you to go back to the oldest or the second oldest or the third oldest. It is up to the person who owns the building as to what they would like to do. They simply need to show to us that there's a historic precedent and there's a reason for it. Just because the new owner style preference is different than the previous owner doesn't mean that the style they've chosen is not appropriate for the building. That's okay. So uh, I'm going to close this uh, public hearing rehearing. Uh, it's not a public hearing. It's a request for rehearing. Well, you wrote public hearing, right? Oh, I didn't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, would somebody like to make a motion about this uh, request for a rehearing? Can I ask a question before? Certainly. Would it be recommended to make a motion to approve or to deny? Just make a to approve. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll just make a motion to approve the rehearing or, or deny the rehearing. Well, what? I'll what <laughs> make a motion to deny the rehearing. Okay. Yeah. Deny the rehearing. Not hold to the not hold the rehearing. Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion on, on board for to deny the public. Can I ask, before we go on with the motion, can I ask, if, what would a rehearing be? A work session or a no, public hearing? be a public okay. hearing. Be, be a the new whole thing again. Yeah. A the, re, whole, a the whole process? No, the well, work sessions always well. You don't need to do work sessions to do anything before the commission. That's optional. Yeah. So if you rehear this, they will come back. We'll do a new notice. We'll notify of others, and it'll essentially be a redo. The focus of the discussion can be narrowed, but it, it's a redo of the application. There's, it's not a modification. It's a new application. Would, Mr. Uh, Krekno, would, would the uh, conversation be limited to those issues that the uh, uh, applicant for the rehearing? Re I, Risen, I don't know one. that I know that definitively, but I would probably err on the side of caution saying no. I think if you're going to rehear it, there's public comment, there's 
So we're back I to the, think the, the, the plating on the uh, kitchen faucets, in other words. Exactly. I mean, that's a safe place. I, I apologize. I don't know the exact answer to that, but mm. I would assume that. Um, and if I'm wrong, then there's a narrower scope. I, I, I ask that because I, I, I'd like to think that I'm in favor of as much transparency or sunlight as possible. And I, and I don't believe that we erred at all in doing it. I do believe that there's someone that doesn't think we came to the right conclusion. Yeah. Um, I don't want to discount Mr. Sobel's comments because I don't want to say that he just doesn't, we, we don't agree and he's calling in this yeah. because we don't agree. He believes we missed something. I, I, frankly, I don't. And I would be willing to go through the thing again if it held no harm for anyone, but I, I don't, I don't know that I want to go through the size of the oculus and the species of roofing and all of that again. But uh, excuse me, but we do have a motion on. I'm it. sorry. Look, looking for a second. Uh, I'm just looking to move this on. I'm looking for a reason to second, sir. You have second. I will second the motion. All righty. So um, we have a motion to deny this rehearing. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 The chair um, votes aye. All those against? So um, we don't have a rehearing. Thank you. Request for rehearing from Devin Quinn and James Butler for property located at 189 Gate Street, Mirbon, family revocable trust owner, wherein permission was granted on May 4th, 2022, to allow new construction to an existing structure construct new addition to existing garage as per plans on file in the planning department. Said property is shown on assessor map 103 as lot six and lies within central residence B in the historic district. Who is here to present this no, case? There is this presentation. Oh, I'm so, very sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Okay, Chairman, so, po point of order, I'd like to recuse myself from this in as much as I'm in a butter and I had recused myself from the sir. decision in the first place. Okay. So um, this is the same criteria that we have here. We all have um, a rather lengthy uh, letter from uh, lawyers um, pointing out what they feel that we didn't do or didn't follow on this. Um, so if anybody would like to discuss this or. I have a question as, as one of the newer members. I noticed it <clears throat> and I understand why that People who come to this commission don't have to have finished with the zoning board or finished with adjustments. They all can happen at the same time, which looks like happened last time too and has happened before. On this one though, the lawyer points out that it all may be made mute if the zoning board. Nick? Well, say that again. No. <clears throat> the lawyer says that if the zoning, that the zoning board is being questioned too. The, yes. And if they <clears throat> change, then our discussion is completely. Yeah, it, I think what they're saying is it, their appeal currently to the, I think they're appealing the conditional use permit from the planning board and perhaps also the variance to the board of adjustment. I know that they're headed to superior court. They file documentations. I can't recall whether it's the planning board and or the board of adjustment, but if those variances uh, or the conditional use permit is overturned, then yes, this would be moot because there wouldn't be a project. But that's not what you're here to judge. Uh, it, deferment of this or consideration of that is really irrelevant, I think, to the rehearing request. I think, you know, trying to paraphrase again, this is a much more complicated uh, document with eight pages here. Um, but so again, the, the, project. The, the standards are, was it unreasonable or unlawful? What, what you folks came to for a conclusion based on your review criteria <clears throat> and the design guidelines, some differences in this case from the last one is that there's, um, there's questions being raised about whether the guidelines were adequately followed and applied by the HDC, um, as a, as a sort of sidebar to that, I think it's important for everybody to recognize their guidelines, not standards. Uh, the guidelines are there to, to help guide the decision rather than be prescriptive that there's only one way or two ways to do it. But um, that's one of the allegations and that the review criteria wasn't appropriately followed. 
Um, there's there's suggestions in here about you know there's there's no real ADUs in this neighborhood, so uh, it doesn't really fit. There aren't many accessory structures. Uh, that this this rear lot of the abutting property is unusually large. Um, I'm not sure looking at the maps that's really valid, but uh, that's again my observation of reading this and looking at some of the fairly objective tax maps that are there and looking at the rear yards of the buildings. Um, there's, there's plenty in here about light and air, and I, I think that's far more a planning board and a, a BOA issue that somehow this 152 square foot addition uh, to the 300 and odd square feet single single story single car garage the existing structure that's there that the addition is is having uh, in the in the um, neighbor's mind a very profound impact is the allegation on their light and air and the quality of life in the rear yard it seemed to me what's really objected to here uh, is the addition the uh, well less the whole project I think when they talk about alternative strategies at the end of the eight page letter they talk about hey could you just keep it in this in the same in the building you've got and not add to it uh, or could you add it a bigger building to what you've already got so it seems like the 154 square foot addition to me to my eyes reading through that was the the biggest uh, concern um, the planning board did put a restriction on this uh, or stipulation in their approval that I think the neighbors asked for a seven foot fence to go along the property line. Uh, and I, I find that a little odd with light and air that that's somehow going to be less of an impact than a 152 square foot addition. But that's just an aside. I got involved with the fence very late uh, in the decision making process. So it, it's a pretty big barrier because there's a split rail fence out there that's pretty invisible now between the two properties and putting a seven foot privacy fence down there would create a tremendous amount of shadow on these narrow yards. Uh, and again, I think the applicant, the moving party here asked for it, not the applicant yeah. asked for that fence. Nick, so. I think it's important to say that the, the uh, person that is uh, looking for this change, um, they can put up their own fence. Well, you know they, what I mean? They, they can, but the, yeah. that was a stipulation of the planning board at their request, and the yeah. applicant is not, uh, the, as far as I know it, the applicant uh, agreed to that. Okay. So that fence was agreed to by the person trying to do the ADU that they would pay for it and put it in place. I'm just raising it as an interesting juxtaposition to the light and air argument, uh, given the size and the square footage of that wall. And they would know in the future that they would have to come in front of us as that a, fence needs to come here. Approval, yeah, both just, parties know that. Just yeah. to look at that. Fence. That's what got me involved because yeah, I, yeah. Um, you know, so it's generally inconsistent in their minds with the neighborhood character. So Again, this sorry. is rather complicated. In the fact, I've been through a few of these rehearings and um, requests for rehearings and actual having the rehearings. One of them was forced on us by the ZBA uh, way back in the day on uh, Lower Market Street. And um, that's the way that the uh, system works is uh, they can uh, ask the uh, ZBA to overthrow our decision. However, they are also uh, apparently taking the ZBA to court also, as well as the zoning board. So there's quite a few pies here that are uh, being taken apart. And um, so I think at this point, it, um, we might as well uh, just have our vote and move on to a public well, hearing. Could I say one more thing and then I'm done? <laughs> I mean, it seems to me at the end of the day, what you really need to focus on is whether the uh, the overall design uh, style of the accessory structure and its addition were appropriate for that property in that context. And then number two in the for what it's worth column was the addition to the accessory structure a subordinate to the accessory structure. Uh, I, I think those are within your guardrails versus a lot of the stuff that's raised that I think is more planning board and BOA related, but that's just my two cents. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, Margo has. Yes, Margo. So I, I agree with what Nick has just said. The question is, does the shape and the size and the um, style and design of the 
and larger ADU comport with these other structures on the site and in the neighborhood. And I think we had long discussions on that, and I think that that is, is true. Um, the other question raised, which is, and I think they're, they've cited here, um, maintaining of the building to lot proportions is found in adjacent lots um, and adapt functionality, functionally obsolete buildings for new uses. So looking at the tax maps and the Google map, the Google Earth map of this area, yes, next to and behind are some very open lots that are unique to that particular neighborhood. But the overwhelming majority of the lots in that neighborhood are not like that. These are outlying. And so the question is, is this particular uh, project, should it be proscribed by the two other lots in the neighborhood, as far as I could tell, there were just two, that are similar to it? Or should it be held to or, or considered in the light of the 20 other properties that are around it? And I think the question for me is, did we talk about that and did we, have, did we take that into consideration? If we didn't, if we think, we're, we think we were wrong in not doing that, then we, I think we should think about a rehearing. But I think if that, was, uh, if that was either part of the discussion or people don't feel that the two lots should override the other 20 lots, then we should not. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Um, so I guess I'll call for another vote the same way we did the last one. Um, so a yes vote would be to. We need a motion for a Yeah, we need the motion, right. I'll do it again. I'll um, make a motion to deny the rehearing. I'll second it. All right. Um, I guess we have had enough discussion. So um, all those in favor of denying the rehearing, say aye. 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 And against? All right. So that uh, rehearing request is denied. So essentially, with um, all of our yeah. opponents, we only have two and three left. Yeah, we got 250 market and 111 state. That's okay. It. Yeah. All right, petition of Port Owner Harbor LLC owner for property located at 250 Market Street, wherein permission is requested to allow new construction to an existing structure. Create egress doors off existing conference room and construct a new patio. As per plans on file in the planning department, said property is shown on assessor map 119 as lot 1-1C lies within character district 5, downtown overlay and historic districts. Introduce yourself. Hello. Good evening. My name is Shannon Alther from TMS Architects, and I'm here representing the ownership group. Uh, just a quick uh, update as Nick gets the drawings up. Um, the Sheridan Hotel was purchased a couple of years ago by my client. Um, they've been working with the city and the fire department to make some internal upgrades. And one of the things, kind of just as COVID hit, and we didn't really get to it at the time, but was to work on a couple of egress doors. Is this correct? That works oh, here. Yeah. Hold it down, I think, the circle. There, there we go. go. So two egress doors right here based on the, there's one there, number two and number one. Uh, based on the existing uh, facade, what we would like to do is create these two new doors in the same material and color white um, of the existing storefront glass system that's there. Um, we would require removing a little bit of the brick so that we can actually put in the door. Um, the building meets code, but it was an older building and the design basically passes one of the second means of egress through a stairway. We try not to do that in the newer code versions. Um, so adding these two doors would help satisfy uh, that egress component as well as make uh, the spaces a lot more amenable in terms of people coming in and out um, from the building. Um, so that's what our request is. Um, we're not changing the style or the context of the building. I'm just adding, asking to add these two new doors and then we have a patio area just so that we can treat that space as a public 
basically space or right public um, gathering space in the event of an emergency. Um, the ownership group had also talked about using that space for gatherings, but um, we hadn't programmed that yet. First, it was to see if we could get the two egress doors put in um, per your group. I'm sorry, I'm a little fuzzy on exactly what the doors look like. Okay. Um, it's okay if I go a little closer to the screen? Mm -hmm. uh, take the mic if you're going to speak over there. And is this still okay? It works, yep. All right. So the, this is the inside of uh, one of the rooms, and basically there's a storefront glass system, and what we would be doing is basically taking out a portion of that to create the door, and the new door itself, the egress door, three feet wide, six or seven feet, six foot eight or seven feet high, would be of the same material, um, metal, white metal, as the storefront. So basically we'd be kind of cutting a little bit of the brick away to put in that new door. Is that all so, so it's metal and glass? Correct, yeah, the existing window system, this is another window here, um, right here, basically is the same product and material, we're just putting a door um, in place of a window that's there. So when you, you can't cut the glass to fit in, to fit the door in, so you're gonna actually take down the metal frames of the, that make up the storefront and put in new pieces that will become the jams of the door? Yes, and those new jam pieces will match what's there, and it's actually within a couple of inches of space um, in terms of taking out the glass panel and then putting in the new door system. And because the current windows are on a brick sill above the floor level, you're going to cut a notch down through the brickwork and insert a new threshold lower than the bottom of the current window location? That is correct and the door isn't as tall as the existing window opening. And so you'll be putting a new sort of header frame across at the top of the door opening? I think we can actually get that new header frame of the door to line up with one of the existing mullions that are already up at the top here. So it may be you know, a seven foot two or a seven foot three high door. Wouldn't be a standard door, but we'd use it to fit in. Now, it, just, off the top of your head, can you discuss how the door will look different than the storefront? The mullions of the storefront are two inch, and the door will have styles on it that were, are four inch. Uh, will there be crash bars and sirens and handles? And <laughs> yep, no, good questions. The existing storefront width is about two and a half to two and three quarters in terms of its style or rail thickness or width. We'll try to match that with the door, which I think we can do. It may have to be a half of an inch bigger. Um, there will be a panic bar on the inside, but we'll try to paint the kind of the outward facing edge of it black so it kind of blends in with a glass plane or a color that matches the glass. Um, and then obviously we'd have some sort of signage on the outs or the inside of the door saying exit for emergency access. And there'd be some handle hardware associated with the door as well. And what is the material for the new patio? Right now we had it set up as either a brick paver or a pervious paver, you know, some sort of a kind of a modular uh, brick okay. element. And uh, is there an elevation change where you need to put some steps or railings down? The goal is that when we come out of those two egress doors to have that as a handicap threshold or access pad there so that way anybody coming out of those two rooms would come out at basically at the same surface level as the interior um, floor level okay so there'd be a threshold there but our goal is to basically have an, an even transition okay do we need to have i'm sorry martin go ahead you sure go ahead finish i was just do we do we need to have a sample of the actual patio materials is that in our purview not really okay but. Um, if it's depends on the view, height and whether there's railings and steps and yeah Martin. I would just say I, you know, I can totally support these egress doors and I can see them I just I think we just should have cut sheets to for final approval as a stipulation yeah see what it really looks like um, I would just like to say the only thing I'm concerned about would be um, a railing around this patio why 
because it's perched on top of a cliff. And uh, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's a, a relatively dangerous place up there. And um, if somebody is out there from a high school reunion or something like that and goes out to have a cigarette, you know, it's just an odd place. And I think they're going to end up with a railing, but they're not asking for a railing. Yeah. Um, I would agree with you, Chair. It looks like on the sides, especially where it starts, the, the highest point of the um, walkway would probably, if you fell towards the river, yeah, you're going to do a somersault. You're going to go over the rocks. You're going to do another somersault, and then you're going to be in the middle of the street. Middle of Market um, Street. <laughs> you might even be in the middle of the train. Um, but yeah, I would agree with those stipulations, though. It sounds like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, would anybody in the public like to um, speak about this Sheridan improvement? And there's nobody online. No. No. So I'll just close the public hearing and look for a motion. I'll, I'll, uh Motion to approve as submitted with the um, stipulation that a cut sheet of the final door and, and surrounding uh, panels be presented. Uh, so elevations of those new entrance systems uh, be part of the uh, be part of the uh, submission. You want it as an admin approval, or you or you? Yeah, it could be an admin approval. I'm asking. Yeah. I'll second that motion. All righty. Do you want findings of fact? Certainly. Um, it is uh, preserves the integrity of the district and is consistent with the special and defining character of surrounding properties. Very good. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? All righty. You have your approval. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, the petition of Coventry Realty LLC owner for property located at 111 State Street, wherein permission is requested to allow renovations to an existing structure, replace the doors and windows, and new construction to an existing structure, construct a rear addition. As per plans on file in the planning department, said property is shown on Assessor Map 107 as Lot 50 and lies within Character District 4 and Historic District. Please introduce yourself again. Good evening. Tracy Kozak, Arch Arch Architects here on behalf of the applicant, Co uh -huh. Coventry Realty. Um, thank you for having us back. We had a f some work sessions and made a few little changes and added some more details. I do have um, a color version of the renderings that are in the packet. Same view. I know color's not in your purview, but if you'd like to see them, I can hand sure. these out. We do, we don't. Oh. No, we don't. Hmm. Existing building was recently repainted, and that uh, reflects the color. So, uh, with that, going through our documents, just a reminder of the scope. We are adding an infill to the rear courtyard uh, where there is uh, a wooden deck and a wooden fire escape that will be removed and replaced with an elevator and a fire stair. This is being done for code uh, life safety purposes per request of the Portsmouth Inspections Department. Uh, they will not give an occupancy permit to the building until there is a uh, code compliant egress uh, Tracy, stair. Can I interrupt? Sure. Because we were passing this thing around, I, I missed the last minute. And you just, <laughs> you, okay. You're rolling right along. I, uh, absolutely. Uh, I said uh, they painted the building blue recently, a few days ago. <laughs> so this rendering shows the new paint color on the corner of Chapel and State Street. And just to reiterate, the scope of the project is an infill addition on the rear uh, where there's currently a courtyard. There's a wooden deck and wooden stairway there that will be removed and replaced with an elevator and a fire stair. This is being done uh, in order to get a occupancy permit for the inspections department. It's a requirement of life safety uh, to occupy the building. So 
Uh, so that's pretty much the scope. Uh, we made a few changes and added some more details since last time. I'd be happy to walk you through that. Uh, existing, existing, existing. <laughs> For reference, we have all the existing. Um, you can see on this drawing the, uh, whoops, yep, right back there, that's the stair that's coming down, and that's the area where the new uh, fire stair and elevator will go. We're adding some uh, three new dormers, too, which show, yep, two on Chapel Street, one on State Street. And that is the new roof plan. So the infill addition in the middle, yep, and the three new dormers. This is the State Street elevation. Uh, we took your comments to heart last time on the storefront first floor facade of the corner building we had previously shown replacing the two windows and one door with a uh, two sets of nano walls uh, we have reduced the size of those nano walls and maintained the central door uh, to reinforce that corner building as its own uh, independent building uh, we've kept that door it we're replacing the door that's there now is kind of trashed, <laughs> and but we are replacing it with the same size. It will have glass on the top and solid panel below. And then flanking that on either side are wooden nano windows to match the ones on the building next door, just smaller. Uh, as I mentioned last time, the upper floor windows would be replaced. There are cut sheets in the back of your packet. We are proposing an all wood Pella. Uh, the roofing would be replaced with an Can asphalt. Can you discuss those shingle. top windows? Pardon me? Can you discuss those windows? Yes. Are uh, they, uh, they're a uh, Pella um, Architect Series traditional, all wood. So normally, we're talking in the third floor, right? Uh, this oh. is the second, second and floor. third floor of the okay. existing building. I mean, normally, the third floor would be six over ones. Six over three, excuse me, I'm very sorry. Six over three with that with that bottom sash moving up and down. So you probably have to have some sort of egress. Yeah, are these new ca windows matching casements. that look? Is that what that's what I'm asking? Yeah. Those are casement windows number one. We right? are showing those as casement. Um, but we have we'd be happy to do a a, rail. a three over six or six Six over six three. Six over three. Yeah. I'm sorry. We, the building will be fully sprinklered, so we are not required to use those as an egress. So are these going to be double hung or single hung windows with that traditional uh, Munton pattern? Or are they? A double hung on the second floor and the first floor of Chapel Street. And the top floors are shown as casements. They're casements. Yep. So you're going to turn those into six over three casements? Oh, right now it's a nine light yeah. sash. Right. So if, if, if it is preferred, we can certainly make that a, a six over three? Yes, I think you can. Sure. And if you did that, would it make more sense if they'd be double hung? Oh, yeah. right. Yeah, just yep. making sure. And with that, what what's the, does that, What's going on in the dormers? Uh, is that good as a nine light, or should it be the same in those four dormers? Oh, you yeah, I'm you only found it again. Have it, what? You found it again. Found what? Not those two. The, the I'm still light? on the on the screen. Of oh. The, the, are there nine lights in the existing three dormers? Hmm. I do have a photo. Yeah, there's a photo in here. It is a nine light, but it is a six over three. So you presumably you do the same thing with yeah, those as we you match would. that. That's a good idea. Yep. Okay. So, so we're just going to stipulate that that is a six over three double traditional hung. double hung double hung wood window. I'd be happy to do that. Okay. And it continues around, I noticed, um, through, what is that street? Chapel Street? Chapel Street, yes. On the next sheet. Sorry, I'm trying to write. <laughs> He's writing. 
So on Chapel same Street, thing. we are Do adding the same thing. Yeah. Uh, two dormers on the top. And the same thing, those are shown at, currently as nine light casements. We would change those to a six over three double hung Wood. in the dormers. Yeah. And the bottoms are replaced uh, with the same style and size. Those are double hungs. The current door has a, a solid board storm door on it, which we would like to uh, replace with this four panel door. And the upper two panels would be glass and the bottom would be solid. That is similar to how the front door on State Street is treated. And you can see that also on the next door building where Agave was and Sol was. And I think the Rosa has it across the street too. And the new stairway addition that's in the uh, background is on the far right of that drawing. You can see the elevator overrun in the distance. Uh, the three-dimensional views show that you can't really see that from the street, but in the two-dimensional, uh, there it is. Tracy, are these openings the way they are today? That is where they are now. Yeah. It's not a symmetric facade. Um, it, you think it is until you actually look at it. <laughs> so Tracy, I'm sorry, the, the front door now has the four transom lights across and then the wonderful old fashioned solid mm. storm door. Right. And that you're suggesting correct. getting rid of that completely, leaving the four lights up top? The transom lights up top would stay and um, we, the door being replaced just to get a more, little more natural light in the space uh, instead of the solid storm door. So it's a wooden door with It's a four glass. panel wooden style and rail door. The two upper panels are glass and there's a yeah. picture of that on the very back page, um, a similar example of how that's done. And uh, also it's on some of the existing buildings next door. Anybody else have some questions, comments? Mr. Chairman, thank mm -hmm. you very much for the opportunity. Um, um, looking at the the handout that you've given us, the Chapel <clears throat> Street windows do not appear to have any casings. Yes, on them. Is um, that a there are some discrepancies between the elevation details and the renderings. The two-dimensional drawings in your packet prevail. There is casing trim on every window. Uh, those all those trim pieces are dimensioned mm -hmm. in your packet on the elevations and that is exactly so the what we'll do. just a rendering <laughs> it's just a rendering uh, don't take it too literally more the color than it's more more to show color and context. which is something that's not in our purview <laughs> <laughs> all right. clever um, um, on the <laughs> chapel <laughs> on the Chapel Street side of the building but uh, on the Chapel Street yeah uh, th there's a, a, a side door into uh, the thing with the shed dormer on it, the piece with the shed dormer. Okay. There we go. Yep. Uh, the door has a hood over it. The hood seems like it's, uh, no. I don't know, like, like, like it's, it's insufficient. I know, I agree. Uh, we, <laughs> it was bigger. It was a big porch last time, and ideally it would be bigger, but we are limited in uh, percent coverage of lot. Otherwise, we get kicked into a variance. Uh, requirement so that is the maximum size we can do without needing variance maximum size of what the hood canopy over the um, that's just not enough of the a awning reason. so it's it's uh, I believe four feet wide and six out two feet which is the maximum allowed as a, um, an exception to what coverage to coverage right um, there's an exception for awnings for Gee, I wish covered. I had my code book here. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to look at that, but are you opposed to that being a little more traditionally we, designed than that? We would love for it to be bigger, but we felt we couldn't without a variance. It just looks really simple. Did you, is, there, is there a reason it has to be covered? Uh, it's, it's simply there to help keep snow away from this outswinging door, which is fire egress. So you don't want to have snow banks blocking your door when people need to leave. But is the door used? It's a fire fire door. Fire door. Yeah. Hopefully it's not used. <laughs> yeah. It, it needs to be um, operable and maintained as an egress. Um, I, I, 
I did not have the pleasure of attending the last work session. Um, and so uh, the side of the building, the wooden building on Chapel Street, is currently clabwooded. Um, the rendering, once again, I'm sorry to do this. It looks like it's a course for shingle, but that's just a rendering issue. Um, the clapboard stay. We're not reciting it. Um, thank you. Uh, that will be the, therefore you're setting up a pattern of the clapboard extending across all of these surfaces. Correct. Okay. Um, one more possibly. This, this may be the silliest question of all. If you look at the old federal brick building from the street, State Street, and trot a little bit to the left, to, in, like you're in front of the Agave building, and look up, there's a little teeny triangle of the sidewall of the brick building that oh, it sits <laughs> over the sloped roof of the building Agave, being shorter than the three-story brick building. And in that space, that triangle, there's a piece of glass. Is that going to remain? Uh, that's a did good you question. Do that, David? I did not. <laughs> I did not. I've been in awe of whoever did do it, but because I don't know how it works, yeah. there, it's it set, just sets there. How do they flash it, huh? Mm, hi, members of the planning board. Mark McNabb. Um, that window. What? Oh, sorry. You're not the planning board. HTC. Um, that window that got added there somewhere. Um, I'd prefer to do away with it. Um, than to replace it. It would have to be replaced because it's not insulated and it's not properly um, installed. But I don't, I don't like it there. So, so just because yeah. you're right there, I want to ask you the next kind of led yourself into this question. But sure. what will you replace it with? Is it um, wood it, on that side, uh, like or is it brick? Like, like kind, whatever the field is. If it's brick there, I would do brick, okay. real brick. And I, not, I've always assumed that it was a brick. It, party wall between the two buildings. It is it is brick, and yeah. and I would replace it with brick. But the representation would be whatever that field is there, which it is brick, Woodside. would be replaced with right. that. Well, thank you. Um, it, and also that awning in the back, you know, it it got highly technical. This addition is permitted by a certain section of the code. It's rarely used. Um, that's this section ten point three two three, which allows an addition if it's code related, and the building department has to sign off and the fire department has to sign off and um, everything's not conforming on lot coverage and they they just have this section that those awnings can't be that design that we originally had it can't it can't be any bigger than that I am okay in this instance if the uh, HTC not the planning board if the HTC prefers to see that go away over that door I'm willing to eliminate that um, it just doesn't look right I'm, I'm here yeah I I'm, I'm struggling with it myself um, I, I tend to rather not have it than have it that way. Um, but well, thank you but it much. is definitely caught in any bigger than that needs a variance. All right, my one more question. I don't care which of you feel it. Chances are you're involved in this, if you don't mind, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on the front facade, you're proposing to take this uh, simulated brick or simulated stone off. Yeah, the and the assumption, my mm -hmm. assumption now for 55 years um, has been that something horrible happened to the front of that building in the process of changing the original windows and doors and some terrible piece of steel was put in over that and that material that stone material covers all that over and has handsomely for some time um, you are going to inherit the whirlwind here when you yeah. pull that down uh, suggestion just from a you know a guy down the street is uh, be prepared to have some brick to uh, put back in that location because it's going to be wanting. But my question, uh, having to do that very thing, is did you did you spend a lot of time thinking about the interpre interpretation of that first floor? Because I, I walk the street, mm -hmm. I stumble and hobble down the street, um, and there's a majority, I think, I think I'm safe to say a majority of this period brick building on this section of the street have arched doors openings and they uh, not only do they have arched door openings but the windows that flank them sometimes two on one side sometimes one on each side but the windows that flank them all seem to line up very 
rigidly with the windows on the second and third floors. Now, I know over time the storefront industry has expanded that and telling people that they need more glass and whatnot, but this seems like a kind of two-phase, uh, heavy-handed um, for a small building uh, to put these two heavy window units in there, and along with that to have a rectilinear door opening when so many of the other buildings are, are, have arched doors. So my question is, uh, how did you get here and, and is it worth rethinking? Um, I appreciate the question, and I, you know, it's it's funny. I'm chuckling because yeah. you probably remember, but uh, you were on the commission when we did the agave, and I voted against it. I'm aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the only difference on the agave is the two flanking windows, extreme right and extreme left, of that quad unit that you put in, line up with the windows on the floor well, above. The, the, the thing on this building, on the 107 State Street section, the section that there used to be a door for the red door upstairs, which was chunked in there and didn't line with anything, and then the center door that we have, and the hodgepodge of windows now, and then the cementuous um, product that they have on the outside, um, it it has so been so destroyed over the years. We're trying to pick a vocabulary that matches the combining of these two buildings and the storefront and the modernness of what what seems to be um, not seems to be is is very popular which is being able to bring the outside in being able to have windows that open um, you know at the time agave was I think one of the first ones if not the first one on these uh, nano windows you know and since there's been quite a few you know Rosa building is quite historic and I have nano windows on those. So my answer to your question is we believe what we're doing to the storefront dramatically improves what has been uh, destroyed on that storefront. But to try to return it to um, vocabulary, the upper floors when it's not there today, um, we, we think it, it's, it's ripe to do what we're doing with it um, and modernize it, and, and, um, but yet something more you know, better than what it is today. Um, so I, th I think the scale of it works. I think the scale of it with the agave nano wall windows work. I think they're quite successful. I think they look quite nice. The mahogany windows that we built on those would be the same quality here. Um, and that's what restaurants want. They want to be able to open that and bring the fresh air in. Um, so I do know what you're saying, and I, and I do appreciate it. I don't disagree. I'm just... It's just I think it, I think the design we picked here is appropriate for the for the building. Thank you very much. Okay. Anybody else? I just have a question about the about that center door and and uh, going back to what Dave was saying about the <coughs> the circle top doors. Is there any consideration or did you consider putting um, a circle top on that? Uh, we hadn't just because we're trying to fit in the existing opening that's there, which has a transom. But I think a arch top could be kind of cool. Um, Just sort of break, <laughs> break up the rectilinear frontage. Yeah, but one thing I do want to point out is the alignment of the nano walls, and we have um, mirrored those symmetrically around the center door, which is in its current location. But um, as uh, Mr. Adams pointed out, um, they they don't necessarily align with the windows above. <laughs> it's not exactly a symmetrical facade. Yep. So um, we could look at scooching them further away from that center door to give, and this would actually make sense practically from a construction point, to have a little bit more brick between the door and the window. Right now it's yeah. only one brick wide, yeah. which is kind of odd, but perhaps we move it over <coughs> another brick or two <coughs> to, to give that door more breathing room. I think those are both really good suggestions um, that that would get a little closer to the symmetry that that Dave was looking for and I think the arch over the door would be interesting we, we fully know that when we pull the cementuous stuff off we have to rebuild that that facade uh, with brick so as far as I'm concerned you know it's an opportunity and a missed opportunity to not um, put a shape if if the Commission prefers an arch door you, you all know my buildings I love arches <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm happy to do that, and I'm happy if, if a motion wanted to consider that that storefront um, and the arch door 
comes back for a, um, you know, a, a separate, yeah. a separate administrative approval. Administrative approval that I'm acceptable to that. Yeah. Right. While you're on that topic, unless there, is there more to say about the R store? You know, I just looked at the zoning code, and I wasn't involved with the previous determination about the two feet and the four feet, and I can see where that came from in coverage. But I would argue this is more of a roof structure than an awning or a bay or a the three examples, a balcony, which are limited to the two feet and the four feet in width. You can get 30 inches, which is a big difference over two feet, even though it would be better to be more. It seems to me roofs are allowed to overhang, which this is a roof over a door, 30 inches off the face of the wall. So yeah, I'm only throwing help. that out there so we, you can consider it. I think with some better brackets and 30 inches, you might be happier with the work with the product. And I think it won't trigger any coverage in BOA review. But I can talk to the others that, anyway, food for thought. Is this another stipulation or well, is this? I think if you're going to come back with the arched opening, you could come back with that if, in fact, I'm right. If I'm wrong, you won't. Mm -hmm. Unless people disagree with it. I mean, it's really you guys. That makes sense. So uh, all of the wooden structures are all um, um, the uh, building on Chapel Street and everything is clapboards four inches on center wood. Correct. Right. And the trim is essentially the same as what is there? Wood, yes. I would just like to be I'm sure sorry. we um, at least acknowledge that this is protruding more onto, onto Sheep Street. It is taking up more space than it did before. I don't personally have a problem with it, but it does put more mass onto Sheep Street. <coughs> Oh, Martin. Hey, um, yeah, I would agree with um, that one brick width between the door and the window is, is probably awkward and not appropriate, and you would never see it that way. Um, I'm surprised we're kind of not. That's formstone. That's been, I grew up with the garbage, um, that it's not historically protected anymore since it's Sorry. got such a lineage. Uh, but anyway, I I think they probably put it on because people thought it was great stuff. Uh, I had an uncle clattered his whole beautiful wood clapboard house in it because um, he didn't want to paint it anymore. So if if you can get it off, I bet you you may find the brick is fine, it's, you know, restorable. But it, like you said, it's been butchered. It's been it's Swiss cheese right now. Uh, that little door we're talking about, yeah, I, I would like to see something over that door. I would like to see that um, presented as almost its own little, um, you know, frontage to the to Chapel Street and not just a little side door. Um, you'll probably put dumpsters in front of it, though, won't you? More, more like a pediment. No, no, no. dumpsters. Okay. No. So it would be nice if it had a yeah. presence. That it was almost like its own little separate entrance. That that would definitely help, you know, keep the rain uh, off of people using the door. So, so I, I would be for something, even if it's just a, a cap over that door to give it some sort of formality. All in all, I think it's a wonderful project. Um, you know, I, I think everything you're doing is terrific and uh, um, you're making a safer building. You're cleaning up that uh, shape straight side of it, and I, you know, I think this, I can support that. All righty. Anybody else? So, is there anybody in the public would like to uh, speak about this project? Uh, is there anybody out in outer space? Maybe. Nobody's raising their hands. A couple of people watching, but okay. um, that's good. No hands. All right, I'm going to close the uh, public hearing. Oh wait, there's a hand. Oh, oh, there okay. came a hand. Yep, Mary Lou, go ahead. I'm reopening. <laughs> Ball is in the air. Mary Lou, can you hear me? Oh, you're muted. I yep. Think. Good. Go ahead. I'm unmuted now. I think you are. Okay. Hi. Mary Lou McElwain, 259 South Street. Just wanted to comment on the back of this building on the Shea Street side. 
There is a bulkhead, or at least there was a bulkhead, on the uh, Chapel Street end. And also, this is where dumpsters have been in the past for other restaurants that have been here. So I just wanted you to pick up on those two comments, please. Hmm. Certainly. Mark? Would you like me to address that? I think, certainly. I think so. Yeah. Because these buildings have been combined, um, we're doing away with all the dumpsters on that side, and they're using the only dumpster corral we have, which is the mahogany one right behind Agave. So there will be no dumpsters there. And the bulkhead gets removed because this code complying addition brings a stair tower to the basement. So it gets replaced with a code complying stair tower, code compliant. which a bulkhead uh, is not an approved means of egress. So we're removing it because we don't like the looks of it. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else, Mary Lou? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, let me just confirm there's nobody else. There, there is not. Okay. I'm going to close this public hearing and look for a motion. <clears throat> With stipulations. With stipulations that Nick will read uh, after right. the motion. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, with Nick listing the stipulations as. Yeah, I may not have them all, but that the third floor uh, windows shall be a six over three double hung wood window as presented uh, tonight. Uh, this is no particular order. That the, the roof canopy or whatever we call it over that rear Chapel Street door um, can be modified if allowed by code uh, and resubmitted for administrative approval. The arch door, you're going to have to help me on this one, an arch door for the main entryway on on uh, State Street, right? Mm -hmm. But it's an exit. But, okay. Yeah. It, well, it's a door. Uh, it'll be designed and resubmitted for administrative approval. That's the kind of job. The windows are going to be moved yeah. on the front. Help me out. Keep going. And yeah. the windows what? The windows. Moved. Bring Further apart from the door, the um, windows shall be f okay. More than one brick away from the door. Just include uh, that all the, the door, the door, door and surround. the two yeah. windows as an at one admin approval together. Yep. Okay. Got it. Anything else? Uh, Four. What about your? Removal of the what about that little window? But well, it's not drawn at all. But he said he's going to remove it. It's it's non-compliant now. Yeah, I think he's going to be forced to do it. So it hardly matters. So it's not in the drawing. We don't need to stipulate it. I don't think it's so. implied. It'll be removed and replaced with what whatever's around it. Yeah, brick. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Second. All right. We have a second. Um, <laughs> It, uh, I will give you findings of fact. Yes, please. It preserves the integrity. Uh, says, uh, maintains the special character of the district and is uh, consistent with the special and defining character of the surrounding property. Very good. All right. Um, if there's no other discussion, I will say uh, all those that are in favor of this, say aye. 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 And uh, against? Do you have your approval? You. You're welcome. You're making this a safe building. Don't go very far. I don't think we have any other business. <laughs> Isn't there one more? No, that's it. I think we have one Congress. No, that was. That's it. They got postponed. Yeah, you said postponed. Okay. Um, motion to adjourn. There we go. Seconded. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. I don't know what to do. All right.